Autosys Workload Automation Best Practices In this module, we will cover some of the best practices for deploying Autosys Workload Automation. These practices include implementing naming conventions, selecting appropriate file locations, utilizing virtual machines, implementing instance-wide encryption, backup and recovery methods, email notifications, optimizing job architecture, performance, and tuning, implementing web UI and CAEEM best practices. Naming conventions. Proper naming conventions are essential when working with Autosys. Thoughtful naming conventions play a crucial role in simplifying maintenance and monitoring, reducing errors, facilitating the identification and resolution of problems, and recovering from failure. Naming conventions should be a component of the application architecture and consistently enforced during the implementation. They should cover autosys elements such as jobs, calendars, global variables, virtual machines, web UI views, etc. These conventions should be linked to groups, applications, geographic locations, criticality, job profiles, and any other relevant criteria on your site. Naming conventions can provide several advantages such as reduce downtime and allow for easier monitoring and reporting by job or group. Web UI filtering and view creation by name simplifies the task of mass updates. Using a number at the end specifying job criticality can be used in notification mechanisms or disaster recovery selection. This is an example of a naming convention for a job. Start with the acronym for the business process, for example, HR, followed by the frequency, daily, weekly, etc. The job type, a command, file watcher, or a box. The application group, Oracle, PeopleSoft, SAP, etc. The process description. And a number for the job criticality. Log naming conventions. Autosys workload automation job logs, the standard out and standard error, should be written to the same locations. Also, the job name should be used in the log file name, as in the example. The job name dot out file will store the general program logging information. The job name dot air file will store the autosys related errors and command errors. Both logs can have date stamped extensions. They should be in the format year, month, day, hour, and minute for easy sorting. Instead of manually typing the job name, you can use the auto underscore job underscore name variable to insert the job name automatically. With the auto run variable, you can also include the job run number in the file name to differentiate between multiple job runs. You can view job log files in web UI or using the auto sys log command with the J option. Use the autosys log minus j job name minus to to retrieve the standard out minus te to retrieve the standard error and autosys log minus j job name to retrieve the agent job log. A virtual machine is a machine definition that references one or more existing real machine definitions. Virtual machines are typically used for load balancing, but they can be used for other things, such as creating an alias for a machine. For example, you can define a virtual machine named Linux, which references the real name of a production Linux machine, Linux 01. By referencing the virtual machine name and job definitions, the production Linux machine can be changed in the virtual machine definition without having to change all jobs that reference it. Virtual machines can also be used to simplify moving machines between instances. For example, by having the same virtual machine that is defined in both environments, 
The job definition does not need to change as each one has the appropriate real machines defined. We recommend virtual machines as a best practice for load balancing across clients. You can define a virtual machine with several real machines and AutoSys Workload Automation chooses a real machine based on the load balancing method defined. The available load balancing methods are CPU Mon. AutoSys selects the machine to run a job based on available processing power obtained from the agent. This is the default method. Job Load. AutoSys chooses which machine to run the job based on the max load and factor attributes for each real machine with the job definition's priority and job load attributes. Unix only, or stat method. AutoSys selects the machine to run the job based on data obtained from a remote Unix computer's kernel statistics daemon. Round Robin. AutoSys selects the machine to execute a job in a round robin manner. Round robin job load. AutoSys chooses which machine to run the job based on the job load method, and then the round robin method is used on the resulting machines to choose the real machine where the job runs. The round robin is the fastest method of distributing load, but does not account for CPU usage. The CPU methods are not always accurate and have more back and forth traffic. The CPU mon provides better performance than the restat method. Instance-wide encryption. Instance-wide encryption defines whether any AES key should be used to communicate with the AutoSys workload automation application server. AutoSys workload automation uses the advanced encryption standard, AES algorithm to encrypt and decrypt data. This algorithm requires an encryption key to encrypt data. There are three choices to configure the instance-wide encryption. None. No encryption is used. This setting is required when version 11.0 agents are being used in the environment. Default. Uses a default hard-coded 128-bit AES encryption key. This key is the same for any installation of AutoSys workload automation. This setup is not recommended for production environments. And AES uses a customized 128-bit AES encryption key. This setting complies with the FIPS 142 standards. The instance-wide encryption setting is defined in the AutoServe file under the Use Encryption entry. The data that is exchanged between the command line utilities and the application server is encrypted using the encryption key. This key is specific to an instance and must be the same on all computers where the server and clients are installed. We recommend that you use the AES setting and then create a custom key for the most secure setting. Backup and Recovery the AutoSys database can be backed up and restored by a total database dump and load, which should be done only by a DBA. The AutoBCP DB script synchronizes data servers on different computers to prepare them for dual event server mode. This script uses the information on the source data server to create two identical servers, source data server and target data server. AutoBCP is the internal AutoSys workload automation mechanism available for synchronizing the dual server databases. Although AutoBCP is recommended, it is not the fastest way to synchronize the AutoSys workload automation databases. Database dump and load are faster but should only be done by a DBA. AutoSys provides utilities to backup definitions. We recommend that you backup the following definitions periodically so you have files to restore in the event of a system failure. Calendar definitions. Machine definitions. Resource definitions. User-defined job type definitions. Job definitions. Monitor report definitions. And global variables. 
Backup calendar definitions. To backup calendar definitions, enter the following commands at the Linux operating system prompt or the Windows instance command prompt. Auto calendar score ASC with the E option, followed by a directory outside of the AutoSys workload automation directory structure where the backup will be created. The file name with the type of calendar, followed by the corresponding type of calendar option and ending with all. To backup machine, resource, user defined job type, and job definitions. Enter the autorep command with the corresponding definition type to backup, followed by all in the queue option, a directory outside of the autosys workload automation directory structure where the backup will be created, and a file name ending with the JIL extension. To backup the monitor report definitions, enter the mombro command, followed by in all queue options, a directory where the backup will be created, and a file name ending with the JIL extension. To backup global variable values, enter the autorep command with the GAL options, a directory where the backup will be created, and a file name ending with the TXT extension. We recommend that you use the same directory for all definitions. To restore your calendar definitions to the database, enter an auto calendar score ASC command followed by the I option the directory where the backup was created, and the name of the backup file. To restore your machine, resource, user-defined job type, job, and monitor report definitions to the database, enter a JIL command followed by the directory where the backup was created and the name of the backup file. To restore the values of the global variables, open the backup file that contains your backed up global variables, and manually redefine any global variables according to the values in the file by entering a send event command for each global variable. These are the commands to back up the AutoSys web UI on Windows and Linux environments. And these are the commands to restore the AutoSys web UI backed up definitions on Windows and Linux environments. For more details, please refer to the AutoSys documentation. For CAEEM backup and restore best practices, refer to the AutoSys workload automation documentation under the Securing, CAEEM Security, Data Replication, Backup, and Migration section. Email Notifications For email notifications, note the following best practices. You can configure AutoSys workload automation to send email notifications to operators or administrators who resolve problems or attend to emergencies. When you define a job to send an email notification, the scheduler sends the email notification during terminal status processing. Messages are written to the scheduler log indicating whether the email notification was sent successfully. For details on how to configure email notifications, please refer to the following documentation. Job architecture. To reduce job stream overhead, consider the following job architecture tips. Jobs with the same date and time conditions produce many unprocessed start jobs for the same time. Stagger start times when possible. Schedule jobs based on when they need to finish rather than when they need to start. Nested boxes. Use flat boxes to reduce the overhead of recursively evaluating starting conditions for child jobs. Boxes containing jobs with no starting conditions increase the time to process the box's running event. Serialize jobs within a box whenever possible. The scheduler that processes the box start job event starts all the jobs in the box. For example, 10 boxes of 100 are more efficient than one box of 1,000. Job starts are processed simultaneously. Performance and tuning. For guidance on AutoSys workload automation and web UI database sizing, tuning, and connectivity, please refer to the provided documentation links.
Auto Sys Web UI Best Practices Web UI can be installed on Windows or Linux platforms. The two most important decisions during Web UI installation are choosing the user under which the Web UI will run and which database to use for the reporting database and the configuration monitoring database. They can be the same database or two different databases. By default, when installing on Linux, the user who runs the web UI is root. However, in many sites, the use of root is limited and discouraged for running applications, making it more difficult for the Autosys admin team to control web UI and access logs when necessary. If these conditions apply to your site, then use another user ID, such as the same one that is used to run Autosys, to run web UI. This will make it easier to administer web UI. The selection of a database can significantly affect performance and the overall user experience. The default Derby database is not suitable for production environments. For production environments, we recommend using an external database such as Microsoft SQL Server or Oracle. Design your web UI environment. Define roles. Web UI requires the use of CAEEM to allow only the desired components of the UI to be displayed. This setup suits a role-based design. The first step is to define the roles and what components or tabs should they have access to. Define components to display. The functionality that is made available to a Web UI user is controlled mainly with the Application Access Resource class in CAEEM. Each action determines whether a functional tab is displayed. Define content. After you have defined the roles and primary responsibilities, implement the design with CAEEM policy. The first step is typically configuring the Application Access Resource class so that the basic screen for each role is set. The next step is to determine what those screens contain. If you have defined multiple Autosys servers, you can also limit what servers are displayed in each web UI component. Design monitoring views. Monitoring views offer a convenient method for end users to determine the status of specific jobs that are relevant to them. Depending on their role, they are typically only interested in a particular set of jobs that meet specific criteria. Internal or external database. The configuration, forecast, and monitoring web UI applications require a database, which is known as the web UI database. The reporting application also requires a database, which is known as the reporting database. An internal Derby database is provided that can be used by all web UI applications. Otherwise, you can specify an existing supported database to which web UI has access. If you specify an existing database, the Derby database is not installed. Use the internal Derby database only for dev or lab environments. This database is not suitable for production environments. For more information on Web UI best practices, please refer to the following documentation. The following topics provide general best practices for CAEEM. Create operational roles. Enforce naming standards. Functional IDs. Use root to run jobs. Create a CAEEM test environment. CAEEM architecture. Terminology. Best match algorithm. And policy types. Please refer to the following documentation for details. In this module, we have learned Understanding and applying Autosys workload automation best practices is important for optimizing maintenance and monitoring procedures, reducing error, accelerating problem detection and resolution, and efficiently handling failures. For detailed guidelines on the best practices for Autosys workload automation, please refer to the provided documentation.